How long could you last on the sea surviving on fish blood and rainwater? Three fishermen from San Blas, Mexico claim they did it for 285 days while drifting across the world. But was this a tale of perseverance and miracles or lies and cannibalism? Join us as we delve into the world of the fish blood survivors. Before the expedition set sail on October 28, 2005, a crew was assembled for what was anticipated to be a shark fishing journey spanning anywhere from three days to a week. Central to this group were three friends, Salvador Ordonez, Jesus Vidania, and Lucio Rendon. Ordonez, a 37-year-old from Oaxaca, was known equally for always carrying a Bible as well as his readiness to engage in bar fights. Vidana was a 27-year-old from Culiacan, a father with two children and another on the way. And Rendon, also 27, was from El Limon, described by friends as reserved, someone who enjoyed the simplicity of living with his grandmother. Joining these three were Juan David, the owner of the vessel, and a fisherman known only as El Farcero. Their vessel for this venture was a 27-foot fiberglass boat powered by a 200-horsepower motor, more than adequate for the task at hand. However, concern over the amount of provisions and gas for the trip loomed over Ordonez. Despite his apprehensions, he was in need of money and forged ahead, unknowing of the journey that would test the very fabric of human endurance. As the expedition ventured into the vastness of the Pacific, unforeseen challenges quickly set in. Initially, their heavy shark fishing tackle was lost to the sea, and in an unsuccessful bid to retrieve it and navigate back to the island, their fuel reserves were depleted, leaving them stranded and vulnerable. The relentless forces of the wind and currents further sealed their fate, pushing the boat out into the Pacific, caught in the same current that stretches from Mexico's coast to the Philippines. With their situation growing increasingly dire, the crew was forced to confront their elemental need for food, water, and shelter. Remarkably, a year prior, Ordonez had taken a survival course taught by Marine Captain Francisco Ramirez in San Blas. Ramirez, upon learning of Ordonez's fate, felt a profound sense of relief that his former student would find resilience. They shielded themselves from the blistering sun with blankets, a meager form of protection. Water became an immediate concern as their supply dwindled. They turned first to drinking ocean water, which made them all incredibly sick. Then, out of sheer necessity, began to drink their own urine one by one. At this point, food was non-existent. In an act of desperation, they captured a sea turtle, from which they drank the blood and consumed the meat, a technique so foreign that it caused some among them to fall ill. Ordonez, demonstrating an almost uncanny adaptability, drank fish blood, likening it to a soft drink. Despite the initial adverse reaction, it seemed to invigorate him for the days ahead. Ordonez was dubbed the cat for his adeptness in catching birds, and previously known for his brawls, now fought for survival in a starkly different arena. Juan and Farcero, distancing themselves, refused to partake in eating the bird and became increasingly withdrawn from the rest. In the face of starvation and against all odds, the fishermen's instinct to survive propelled them to innovate. Despite the loss of most of their equipment, they still had knives and the remnants of the boat that could be repurposed. Demonstrating remarkable ingenuity, they crafted fishing tools from what was left. Hooks were fashioned from the springs found inside of the motor, while insulated motor cables cut to lengths of three feet served as fishing lines. The initial success with barnacles as bait soon led to a sustainable cycle of using smaller fish to catch larger prey like dogfish and sharks. This practice not only provided them with much needed nourishment, but also supplied them with vitamin C from the uncooked seafood, a crucial nutrient to fend off scurvy. Their efforts bore fruit, with days where they caught up to 60 fish, consuming two or three for their meals and drying the rest under the sun to preserve them. Rainwater became their new source of hydration, collected in plastic bottles, ensuring they never ran out. A poignant moment of human resilience was Ordonez's 37th birthday, celebrated in stark contrast from the world, as he captured and consumed a small shark, eyes, head, brains, and all. As December and January unfurled their storms upon the Pacific, the tempestuous weather rendered fishing impossible, leaving them with only water to subsist on for stretches as long as 13 days. The storms limited their diet to strictly birds, a sustenance Juan and Farcero steadfastly refused. Time, marked by Rendon's wristwatch, became a precious commodity, a reminder of the world beyond their immediate suffering. 
This period marked a turning point in their journey, culminating in the tragic death of Juan David, the owner of the boat, from starvation in January. Ordonez recounted the haunting moment of discovery. Everyone was sleeping, and I was trying to fish for something to eat when he called to me with a little groan. I got down near to him, carefully. He was lying on the bow of the ship, and I said, What's wrong, Juanito, brother? And he didn't respond. I put my ear to his heart, and he was dead. For Senor Juan, we said our seven fathers and seven Hail Marys, then threw him into the ocean. In the freezing temperatures of February, the crew's bond deepened when they huddled together for warmth until one morning when they found Farcero had died in his sleep. Despite the overwhelming odds, the three remaining men sought solace in singing, playing the air guitar, and reading from the Bible that Ordonez faithfully carried. And on August 9th, after drifting across the world, they began spotting ships in the distance and wondered if they had made it to China. Their journey took them 5,000 miles at a pace of less than one mile an hour all the way to the Marshall Islands. Saved by a Taiwanese fishing boat trawling for tuna, they were finally brought to safety. Their journey echoing the historical maritime roots of the Spanish Empire between the Philippines and Acapulco culminated in a poignant reminder of human resilience, faith, and the indomitable will to survive against all odds. Upon their miraculous return, the fishermen were greeted as folk heroes. Rendon was greeted by hundreds of fishermen and townspeople, the mayor organized a welcoming ceremony, and a special mass was conducted in their honor, their survival heralded as a manifestation of faith's power. However, their story, as compelling as it was, sparked skepticism and controversy. Fueled by the survivors' relatively healthy appearance upon rescue, and initial omissions of the other two men completely in their recounting of events, Critics pointed to the lack of records for their departure and speculated connections to drug trafficking given their hometown's notorious reputation. Could they have set off on a drug trafficking mission that went awry? And when they ran out of water and food, did they really start drinking fish blood? It's a little curious that the survivors are the three friends and the two who died weren't even mentioned in their stories. They were also healthy when they got rescued. If their story is true, they had a steady diet of fish for months before the rescue, but they could be hiding a much more sinister secret, one of murder and cannibalism. If these really were traffickers, they may not have had the same respect for their crewmates as a group of religious fishermen would have, and seen them as a way to survive. Could desperation have driven them to unspeakable acts? Despite the swirling accusations, the survivors stood firm in their account, offering to undergo lie detector tests, their story, marred by controversy, yet underscored by the miraculous, remains a profound reflection on the human condition, the depths of despair one can endure, and the fact that people will be jealous of just about anything. As the sun sets on this extraordinary saga of survival against all odds, we're left pondering what really happened out there. Was this a tale of human perseverance and faith, or was it a tale of drugs and murder? Until next time, stay dry. What do you think really happened out there? Let me know in the comments. If you want another video on some weird stuff, check these out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. It really helps the channel. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time.